I'm really very honored to be asked to do this. Unfortunately, I can't speak Cantonese very well, so I think somebody needs to help me to interpret. I was asked to speak about reminiscence. To me, reminiscence means remember Describe real-life story, good, bad, sad, and happy. The most important thing, I think, it helps the person who narrates the story. <coughs> it helps the carer who listen. It helps the writer who wrote. It helps the children to know what all the narrators or grandparents or mothers or whoever have gone through. Listening may learn something now, may inspire them to know those who have gone through life. They suffer, they have to struggle in life. At the same time, the listener will appreciate what the person has gone through. Finally, the storyteller, mostly older people, will discover his or her life had not been in vain. They discover sometimes what they had done. Some people did appreciate it. He or she realizes that life is worth living. For the carers, some insight about older people will really help them to discover how they should help the old people. For all of us and children, by listening, we increase our insight and hopefully increase our respect for the enormous difficulty that the old people have gone through. For instance, myself, I am Chinese. I cannot be anything else. My parents came from China. I was born in Burma. I lived in Burma. Unfortunately, the Japanese came and invaded Burma. We had to run, so I experienced war. I experienced a lot of very, I encountered a lot of very sad stories along the road. It took us 10 days, others took more. We walked, we climbed mountains, we were given lift and Fortunately, we arrived in China. The whole body, whole family were there. Unfortunately, my husband's family, they died. They all perished. They went to India. Then when I was in India, I went through famine, Japanese bombing, starvation, communal fight, riots, all kinds of things. And then there was a short war between China and India. And most of the Chinese people, those who can, they have left India. And those who can, they have left Burma. And they are here, or in America, or in Hong Kong. I'm lucky when I was in India, I was able to learn something. So when I came here, I was able to work. You see, I want to contradict a bit about the earlier speakers. They said we've been here for 200 years. But when I was a community worker, I had to dig up the books to find out exactly when the Chinese came here. And I discovered they came here during the Napoleonic War. It was said in that book that they were unable to get soldiers. They went to China 
to recruit soldiers. They couldn't speak English, but they are good enough to be soldiers. Of course, by now, all those have died. I came in the 50, and a lot of them came a bit earlier. So you can imagine how old we are. Those who are my age, they are not so lucky as myself. My father believed in education, so we were educated. But a lot of people who came from Hong Kong, Malaysia, not China then, from other parts of the world, Chinese people came here. Unfortunately, they were not literate. So what happened? They can't speak English. Not that I can speak English, but I still have to use my dictionary. When I, looked, when I was going to speak on this reminiscence, I was asking my colleague, what is it in Chinese? I'm sorry, up to now, I don't know how to pronounce the words. You see, we all have to learn. And the thing that I see really sad is all those people who are my age. They can't speak any other dialect except their own. Though I speak four dialects, Chinese dialects, I can't speak Cantonese that well, nor Mandarin that well, or Hokkienese or Fuchanese. That's why I don't want to deliver this talk in those languages, dialects. Because since I came here, I have to learn English too. So I have to improve the thing that I have to say so that people can understand me. If you have time, I'd like to recommend you to read three books which I found very interesting. Because of my work, I was in touch with all these people. The first book is called To Make Ends Meet. I think all the old people here, like myself, we must have found it hard to make both ends meet. And that is a very good book to read. And one of the things that lady said is they did, mostly ladies. Unfortunately, men died before ladies died. And she said, if you left home, like me, without qualifications, that was how you have to live with only your wits to take you any higher. The second one is about life after work. The story is about freedom, opportunities, and change. And these are people who are a bit enlightening, who knows how to read and write. The third one is the stories from ancient China. Because I've been here for so long, I concentrate on English. So when I have time, I like to read books on China. And this is a very interesting book called Story from Ancient China. And I'd like to share with you two stories, what they have written. And I'm sure, you know, especially the men, they will understand. Who Chuan Xin Yi? That means they don't want to wear new dresses, new clothes. A lord in China in olden days, you know, quite high, equivalent to our lord here, and all the rich people. The wife has given him a new coat. He said, I don't want this, because he always wear old ones. And so his wife said, if you don't want to wear this, where are you going to get your old clothes from? So that is a nice story from here. And when I read that, I thought, that's a very nice thing. Finally, I want to give you another story. That is a king who has a son. And he was so happy, he has a banquet and invited all his staff to come and have a meal. Not only a meal, he also gave them presents. And so all the staff, they felt a bit embarrassed. They say, you have a son. In what way can we help you? He said, you can help me to have a son. 
So that's the end of it. I hope you enjoy all these stories. Thank you very much.